Good evening. I'm excited to share with you some features I've been working on as part of my data visualization library called Oz. And the specific feature in question is uh, live code reloading for closure code. Um, so those of you who have used FigWheel uh, in front-end closure script development know that it's sort of this wonderful experience where kind of when you get into a groove with it, um, there's a sort of flow that emerges where as you save changes to your file, um, the user interface just updates sort of magically. Um, and that sort of unlocking of flow um, really kind of contributes to productivity. Anyone who's sort of experienced it knows what I'm talking about, knows that it's this really wonderful thing. Um, so part of what I'm trying to do here is sort of capture that um, as part of a sort of data science workflow. And um, not necessarily exclusively data science, you know, we'll see who ends up using this in what situations. Um, I'm kind of interested to hear feedback on where folks think this might be useful. Um, but the, it's at least sort of uh, where, where I'm intending to use it. Um, and you'll see sort of how that, how that plays out in some of the decisions that I've made here. So um, to get started, we'll see what the setup is here. And basically it's very minimal. Um, all that we do is, you know, we just generated a, um, a, a fresh template here with line new Oz test. And, um, and we added in the, um, oops, we added in the, uh, the project.clj uh, our dependency on Metasaurus Oz 1.6.0-alpha1. So once we get that in here and save that file, um, we can fire up a REPL and require our oz.core namespace as oz. So the next thing we're going to do, and, and this is really where the meat, the meat comes in here, is we're going to run oz.live reload. And we're going to specify the name of a file that we've created here. And before I get into it here, um, running the code, um, the file we have here um, is a very simple little file here where we're just defining a name and then printing out hello name. So um, the name of this file is test live coding. Um, and what you're going to see is once I execute this, it's going to indeed execute this code as well as some other sort of logging stuff. So we'll see what that looks like here. So sure enough here, so starting live reloading on file, reloading file, um, so warning, and then, um, and then in here in the middle, it prints hello world as we expected. Um, and then done reloading file uh, and some other kind of crap here that we need to clean up in a future version, but, um, but it did what it was supposed to, right? So um, now what we're going to see is that when we go in, if we go and we add something like um, print line um, from Seattle, it didn't print out hello, hello world, um, it only printed out uh, from Seattle. Um, now, the reason for this is that you can sort of imagine if there was some stuff above this change that had taken a long time to run, we wouldn't want to run the entire file and have to go through all that work that we already did. Um, so th the idea here is that we only run from the last, um, from sorry, excuse me, we only run starting from the first form that has actually changed substantially. Um, and that's sort of ignoring white space changes. So, um, so if we come through here and, um, and we update world and change that to closure, you should see that um, indeed now it prints out hello closure and from Seattle um, because name closure came first and so anything that's going to follow is going to get rerun. Um, now uh, again, so part of the idea here is that this is um, this is thinking, this is sort of trying to take into consideration what might happen if you have a long running form. So let's just sort of simulate that for a moment and we'll do something like thread sleep um, 3000 here, uh, three, three seconds sleep. And you'll note that once I save this file, when it gets to this form, it's going to stop and it's going to tell us, hey, we have a long running form here. It's going to print that form out and it's going to tell me how long it took to run. Um, so this, this feedback just kind of gives you some additional information that again, you know, wouldn't really make sense in sort of a fig wheel flow. But here where we have these long running forms and might want to be kind of keeping an eye on how long it's taking them to run, um, this is some really helpful feedback for us to just be kind of passively getting. Um, so now um, one more thing to show you before we kind of, uh, before I let you go. Um, let's say we have an error somewhere in here. Um, and just to kind of make it a little more interesting, let's say that I'm going through, I'm going to update something above here. So a bunch of stuff's going to rerun here. Um, note that it prints out Hello World again. Um, but when it gets to this error, it, it raises an error message. So it's error processing form, prints out the form, and we get a stack trace here. Um, now, uh, what, I want to, what I want you to note here is if I go in and I make a little change, note that it did not 
rerun um, print hello name, right? So it's, it's watching and it knows that if, if it successfully ran part of uh, the, the set of changes on the last execution, it doesn't need to rerun those, right? So it's only gonna start from where there was an error. Um, so again, just trying to make sure that we're only doing kind of the minimal amount of work each time um, we're going through an execution cycle. Um, but now you'll see that if I go through and I fix that change, um, the only stuff that's gonna get rerun uh, is everything that was after that, that error that popped up. Um, so um, that's pretty much it. There's some, there's some sort of potential gotchas here. The one thing that um, this supports, as far as I can tell, most of the kind of closure that folks would use on kind of a day-to-day -day basis, um, some of the things that won't work have to do with um, binding, uh, uh, that is to say root binding of um, dynamic VARs. Um, and so that's this is a whole sort of thing that ended up being really kind of interesting in getting the namespace declarations to work. Um, and if you're kind of interested in that, you can take a look at the code and see what um, sort of gymnastics we had to go through there to get that to work. Um, the bottom line is it's possible there's some code that won't work if it uses these kind of um, you know root, root bindings on um, dynamic VARs. Um, but, uh, and by root binding, I mean, I should say calling set uh, bang on, um, on dynamic VARs to, to set the root binding. Um, but as long as you're uh, not using that or none of the libraries you need use that, um, you should be kind of good to go. And, and even when you do, you should be able to do that kind of outside of the context of, of um, your, the, the sort of live coding script um, and just in the sort of normal REPL um, before you sort of get into the context where you're running there. Um, so yeah, again, as long as you do that, you should be fine. Um, yeah, I think that's that's all I have to show you for now. I'm really excited about this feature. I've been using this for you know a few days now uh, on some projects, and um, it's been a pretty surprisingly nice flow. And you know, I'm someone who has a kind of I'm pretty comfortable with a text editor that I have kind of rigged out that with a REPL connection and everything. And um, I'm sort of surprised at um, how how nice it's been just to kind of have that that fig wheel flow in, in with. Um, uh, with my sort of data, data science flow where it's actually kind of almost adds more value because it's got this thing where now I don't have to worry about the those long running computations that I've already run um, and really really does kind of save me save me a bunch of work having to muck around with which forms I'm running when etc so um, so I, that, that's 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 all I'll say for now um, just that uh, you know I'm excited for folks to check this out and um, really welcome feedback from the community I'm going to leave this in alpha for a little while until it kind of settles in. Um, so if there's anything you want to, um, uh, you want to chime in with, um, you know, please let me know. And um, thanks for taking the time to check this out. And, uh, you know, hope to, hope to hear from you on it. All right. Thanks a bunch. Bye.